Well, welcome to the planning board meeting for Monday, uh, the 13th of July, 2015. Thank you to HCAM for taping the, uh, the meeting. We're down a couple of members, actually three, I think. And, uh, but we have a couple of continuations and a continued public hearing for uh, Lumber Street and 77 West Main. That's and the uh, continued public hearing for uh, the Marathon Solar Project on East Main Street. Those will be the two two really biggies. Um, and we, we have some information from Eversource, though they couldn't make it here, but Elaine can speak to that. So let's start with a couple of these continuations that we have to vote here. The first one is Laurel Avenue. Uh, I think you saw the letter that we put together uh, Lane has been in discussion with the, uh, and so have I, with the uh, lawyer for the applicant. Um, they are evaluating whether or not they want to pull it or not. But at this point, we would like to continue it to uh, 7.30 on August 24th. And we would like to see a motion for that. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. I didn't hear the exact date. Is it 24th of August, yeah. which will be our second meeting in August at 7:30. So, and also to extend the time to September 4th. And to extend the time for submitting the decision till September 4th. So that was in the motion that I thought I heard. It was. Yep. Okay. Uh, everyone ready for a vote? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? One up, one up, and one up, or no abstentions. Yep. Okay, so no. motion motion passes passes five to, to one. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, we'll, we'll uh, do the uh, continued public hearing for uh, Zero Lumber Street and 77 West Main Street. And we'll talk about uh, the utility pole location as part of that. So, Paul, crew, come on up. Okay. Elaine, did you give them a copy of that new condition that no. we just put together? I'm sorry, it was July 27th, so we said. Next meeting? Yes. July 27th is the, it will be the next meeting, but but not for the continuation. That was August 24th. August 24th. Oh, August 24th. Yeah. We have a. Why don't we st talk about utility pole location? And Elaine, you talk to EverSource, et cetera, and why don't you give the board the results of your conversation? I spoke to uh, Joanna Leria EverSource. The, uh, community representative and also who had spoken to their engineers and so she looked up both of the applications for the board tonight. Uh, there's no work order yet for the Lumber Street project but there is one for the solar. But she did say that Eversource works with the customer to provide uh, safe and uh, continuous uh, electricity to a site and the customer has the option of an overhead or underground service. So um, for both of these projects, Eversource will present both design options to the customer for selection. So the customer gets to select the option for serving the site, both either underground or overhead. And um, so she said the overhead or underground service connection options are driven by the customer and field conditions are sometimes a factor, but it's the customer's choice and the town can require underground service um, in its conditions of so that's conflict a little bit different from what we heard from you and yeah, from the other people. Definitely but conflict with what we were told, so we're yeah. She said even if they had not presented those options before, they will present them now. So she made a note of that. She'll present you with, they will present you with both options. Yeah, what is the cost? I, I don't know what the cost of this is. We've had our, the electrician, uh, Paul's electrician has actually been chasing this down since uh, for the last two weeks to try to get a full response from them on what it would take to do an underground service. I spoke to Kevin about that after the uh, two meetings ago. So it sounds like it's not necessary to have a poll on 
the eastern side of Lumber. Correct. For the, for the new portion. Right. You said that they were, they had some familiarity with the site, so not that she could speak in detail, but there would be nothing they, they that would prevent They don't have a work yet because they don't know what your loads right. will be, um, but they're familiar with the project. Okay. So anyway, we proposed to make it so we could approve together condition 18, which basically says you try to do the poll, or do without the poll. If there's any problem, you just come back and administratively will yeah, there's just some talk about yeah, this. This is not a problem. I think you'd have to come back and ask for the amendment or Yeah. I mean, and that would be an administrative one from, from this board. So it would hold you up. Okay. But hopefully. The final thing, you know, the final thing looks better in there, right? Yeah. yeah. It looks a lot better. We're doing work on that street in the Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The repaving okay. bit is going to be all done by right. the news folks. That's why you have to go through any mains sewer. I mean, you have to go above that. Or? Well, the sewer doesn't come down that far. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not sure where the water main is, but I don't think the water main's there either at this point. All right. Shouldn't be so uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, okay. I just kind of wish that they hadn't given us conflicting information. So right. They, they said we couldn't do it. So we don't <laughs> end up giving you conflicting information. Yeah. If we can do it, it's not whatever, then okay. that's fine. Okay. So we were talking at the last about conditions. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about the things that remain. One is the sewer connection. Uh, I've had discussions with John Westerling last week, I guess it was last week, and he said he's working towards approval of town sewer for this particular project. I believe, Paul, you've had similar conversations. Yeah. They are trying to craft a approval that doesn't set precedent they don't want to set. Right. Uh, but I think there's a lot of unique concepts for this particular project that will allow them to do the sewer for this particular portion. So we have, we had already discussed, I believe, condition 16 last time, and everyone was kind of happy with that. And it sounds like that, that would allow us to proceed with that. The other good news is as of this morning, Beta has finally reviewed and reviewed and reviewed, and they've come to the conclusion that all their concerns regarding the two uh, recharge areas have kind of gone away. So we got a green light from our consulting engineer on the current design that was submitted almost two weeks ago. And that's the email? And that's the one-page email that got we it. finally got there. The, the longer one that we got, like last Thursday or Friday, that Six, was... 17 pager. Yeah, that, that one was kind of, well, I believe the uh, consultant they had to help them with the wetlands was overly conservative. And uh, when Phil got back from vacation, he recognized it as that, I believe. He came back very rested from vacation. Good. Well, that's good. So, I think we've gone through all the the items. Are there any comments from members of the public? There is an additional letter this evening from oh. the Sportsman's Association. Yes, thank you for reminding me. We got a letter from the Sportsman's uh, Association. They didn't say yes or no, but they wanted to make sure the public record contains something that says that uh, there's an active gun range nearby. Uh, I believe, Elaine, we can reference that letter in our decision, and that would be Good. adequate at referenced in the body of public that you've received. That we received the comments from them. And I think that takes care of the requirements. I don't see any need for a condition that, <laughs> that says that there's a something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, representing that. Oh, okay. That, that's all we wanted to do was just make it aware. That's all. Thank you. And we'll put it in the in, in the site plan approval. Can, right. Uh, it, it, is my understanding correct that we'll receive, as this project continues, each one of these will be a separate. Yes. And each one will be a separate presentation between the planning board. Yes. And to cover <laughs> what we feel is our just do is, should we do a letter for each one of these? Yeah, that might be the right thing to do. Okay. I mean, you've got the, the swim and tennis club coming up. I don't want to take up your time. No, no, no. No, no. Well, we're, 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 we're very uh, interested in protecting the, uh, the 
uh, ability to, to continue. Well, no, I, I I have a friend that allows me to go with him as a guest to the shotgun range occasionally. So. <laughs> okay. for the chair? Yeah. So, Ms. Langer, so this is for the commercial portion. So um, this should be less further away. The Hobbit and Muse, which is the. That's already been condos, decided. That, right. That's the closer portion. And then uh, where people would be more likely to complain because that's where they're living. And then there's a, a sports complex, tennis, and or sports complex that would probably be less of an issue too. That's even closer, but less of an issue. So. Okay, again, that's why I asked the question sure. what should be done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know where this building is, right? Right next to the center. Sure. You know where the building is. This yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, seeing all of that, I think we're ready. <laughs> and Paul, all the revised conditions that Elaine put together in the memo, I think, were for the mm -hmm. discussions we had the last time? Correct. We reviewed them. We didn't have any changes or issues with the conditions. Okay. Any board members have any issues with the conditions as Elaine? We, we went through them in great detail the last time. Right. Um, so, basically, I think we're looking for a a finding that the application conforms with the site plan standards and the master plan special permit issued by the board for, for the neighborhood mixed use area. Are you looking for a motion? Yes, I am. So Second. Moved. Seconded. Further discussion on the motion that uh, we basically find that uh, this meets all the standards. Okay, seeing that, I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. 6-0. Um, let's see. Then we need to have a motion that talks about approval with conditions. And it'll be 18 conditions, including the new one tonight. Uh, I don't know whether, I don't think we need to read through all that. Everyone that's here has a copy of, of the conditions we're at. Uh, People would like a copy if they're still over here. That, right, if anyone wants a copy of all the conditions. Uh, and they are what we talked about the last time. So. I'm also looking for, I guess, a motion for conditions of approval uh, found on page 2, 3, 4, and this new sheet for number 18. So conditions 1 through 18. I move to uh, approve the conditions 1 through 18 as listed in the memo plus this, this number 18, which is an addition for tonight about the uh, poll. Okay. Second. So, so moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Look for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. I think you're set, Paul. Thank you. From us, finally. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for all the cooperation. Miss all of you. We'll see you again soon. Sure. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. 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 Anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay. Just for your name in the record. That's all. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's get through some of the business that's uh, approval not required for 15 Claflin Ave. Uh, this is the Davis property. Yep. A little bit of it. You have the plans, Lee? This is a piece of property where the town bought half of it at town meeting for a new cemetery. 
it looks like we're dividing the lot where you have an odd shaped lot that becomes part of the Who gets Who gets the little driveway over to uh, Mount Auburn Street? The house. The house gets that. Okay. Hmm. Surprise to that, but whatever. It doesn't matter to me. That's what was negotiated, obviously. The town will access it from the existing cemetery. Right. So we get a kind of a weird shaped lot, too. Oh, well. Mm. That triangle there. Yeah. If I put my ex cemetery commissioner hat on, I can just kind of wonder why you would do it that way, but whatever. Was there a reason? Or does it really matter? It, to me, it doesn't matter. I'm sure they wanted to convey as many square feet to the town as possible to justify a price. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions anyone has? Seeing none, I look for a motion to approve or sign the ANR plan for. Fifteen plus and half. Moved and seconded. Very proposed. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Anyone opposing? Motion carries. We need two signatures and a date. not required plan for 276 Ash Street. This is over near the house of water, I believe. And this is, I think, a, what, a minor adjustment between two neighbors? And does meet all the criteria, I believe. It does. So there's just this little, this little jog in the center. One inches out here. Okay. Oh. Just a little adjustment. Are they going to expand the house or something? Who knows? Know. Okay. A little jog that obviously does something. Maybe, maybe he's got some expansion plans for the house and needs side setbacks. Okay. But whatever. It does meet the criteria. So, are you fine with it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Looking for a motion to approve uh, 276 Ash Street. Approval not required. So moved. Second. Second. I think you're ready for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. We're doing pretty good here. Um, the lane on the master plan update did you want to just get the sections out in front of us or tonight or did you want to say something about it or I uh, didn't really need to say much about it other than this just has the uh, revised it's revised since the board last time so in September of 2013 to the extent that there's new members um, will be new to you um, and then it'll just go to the people you've identified to review them um, the transportation one, just want to mention that Jennifer Burke worked on that one. Okay. So that's, that's great. And um, also, as you go through these, identify if you take pictures, maps, anything like that, um, that we'd like to put in as well. So in addition to the goals, you're looking at thinking of ways we might want to illustrate the text. And anything that might be missing, and or it doesn't need to be in there. And at this point, if you have individual comments, try to get it to the guy that's or gal that is putting it together, or, or in a lane. I mean, maybe to a lane, maybe get some all administratively there. 
And then, you know, if you, when you're thinking about the goals, um, they should come out of the issues section. So at the end, there's an issues section, and that's where we kind of identify the things that need to be looked at, and then the goals should come out of that. So to what extent something's missing from the issues section, do you think should be in there? Um, make a note of that. From an overall timing for this master plan, we're going to get probably busier this fall with Legacy Farms Road North in the subdivision up in that area. Uh, but what what else is holding us back right now other than this plowing through? To do it. So the two, two last sections will be economic development and community facilities. So Jennifer's doing economic development, and I'm looking at the community facilities. And Perhaps at your next meeting or the one after that, we'll have those out too. Okay, so we'll. And I think th those of you, if, if it's already, um, if the board's already looked at yours, I emailed you the word version. As well. so. so basically, we'll we'll start. Hey, yeah. We'll we'll start probably. In no, no. <laughs> Jennifer's not here. <laughs> yeah. We'll start probably maybe in the September time period of really going through them one at a time, or two at a time, or whatever, depending on the meeting schedule. We'll start really working it. Is there a thought to have like an initial draft of all the different sections completed by a certain date? Cool. Okay. We want to have a public forum some point and get it out to the other boards and committees? Yeah. 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 So maybe depending on how busy we get, maybe an October-ish initial draft so that we can finish something by the end of the year and get it kind of all done be before we get crazy on, on uh, Town meeting type yeah. stuff at the you know so you almost might think about working backwards in terms of you know X date yeah and then from there just kind of do a project plan in reverse yep. Yep. as to you know like each individual section should be done first mm -hmm. draft this way and then you guys can coalesce them all together I don't know, just yeah the thought as we yeah. through that process yep well, I definitely want to get these things done and yeah. it's one of these things that you don't have to do per se, other than the fact that you're supposed to update this every five years or so, and we're pushing on eight, I think, at this <laughs> point, so. Well, it's just, a, it's a town policy. Town, it's not, not a law. Yeah. Not a law. Yeah. Good to follow the policy. It's a good, yeah. I agree. And, and a lot has happened in the last seven, yeah. eight years, too. Okay. Uh, we're still doing along pretty good here. Uh, all the members of the Design Review Board wish to be reappointed, which is kind of actually pretty good because it's a pretty cohesive group. Mm -hmm. They seem to know what they're doing. Um, we're getting pretty good input out of out of that crowd. Um, I'm looking for the pages that, I guess it's on page 11. Uh, so, uh, So basically, uh, I, the, the members are, are set up by statute or by bylaw. Town bylaw. Town zoning bylaw. The zoning bylaw requires, sir, and, and allows some alternate members too in the bylaw. Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is this is the full complement. Mm -hmm. So we're not looking for any new folks for design review. No, and nobody has applied. And nobody else has applied. So, just to make it easier, maybe reappoint the motion to reappoint Claire Wright, Sue Ellen Stoddard, uh, Jeff Doherty, Jeanette Thompson, Gail Fallon, Rita McNamara, and Sean McGinnis. To That's R I A, Rhea McNamara. Rhea. Did I say Rhea or did I screw Rhea. it up? Oh, I screwed it, it up. Might again. Have, I missed it. Might have been the air conditioning. Uh, hopefully it was the air conditioner because I did that once at the wrong time and I uh, try to do it better now. But anyway, uh, that's the mo. Uh, I entertain that motion. Second. Uh, uh, I, I, I move the motion. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Further discussion? S seeing none. Uh, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And we're getting everything done except for the public hearing. Uh, we sent the Board of Selectmen a letter 
last week or so uh, asking to get onto their agenda to talk about the six or seven letters that uh, they have ignored. Um, and uh, Was there any response to your letter? Norman talked to me and said, well, let's put it off a meeting because Ben is off traveling and he didn't want to embarrass him. I threatened that if I don't get a response, I'll go to the public comment period of their, their meeting. I probably won't do that tomorrow. And then I don't think they're meeting for another week. But quite frankly, I'm not pleased that our input is, is ignored. And uh, so, agree. so uh, I'm trying to remember what other correspondence we have had. There, you might have seen it. I don't know whether Elaine forwarded the email to everyone. There was uh, erosion control problems on Legacy Farms Road North. DPW was advised that they silted up some vernal pool and wetland and running down Franklin Street. And, oh, come to do some enforcement and they're going to talk yeah. about it tonight. Yeah. I had noticed in an earlier rain that there was some mud on Franklin Street that went down all the way to, uh, uh, what's his name's property? I can picture him. Uh, Schmidt. And I thought they'd kind of fix things up, but obviously they didn't do a very good job. It was heavy rain, I think it just kind of blew through everything. So part of the problem is that they cut down a lot of the trees. Some of the trees were actually on the side of the road was a wetland. And this took away all the vegetation, so the water is getting worse. Well, I it's not winter. So Mr. Schmidt alerted us to it, and we made it to go out and dump it out and, and document it. Thanks to him. So anyway, that's that's. Uh, Have they since addressed it then? Have I'm, they since addressed the issue? I believe they're they're working on that. Working they're, on they're appearing at ConCom tonight to discuss it. <coughs> That's, that's not our, our enforcement, per se. Yeah. Uh, we, we're, we're, we're looking at July 27th as our next meeting. If right now we only have a uh, concept plan for dividing up 25 Ash Street as a possible item. The developer wants to create two back lots and <coughs> potentially give the town some land for us uh, approving a small cul-de-sac. And then he would probably want to build a common driveway. But that will all be explained at that next meeting. On the 27th? I will not be able to make the meeting on the 27th. Okay. The only other reason we would keep the 27th as a meeting is if we have to continue the public hearing on this solar, solar type thing. Uh, I'm not sure that we get to the point where uh, we'll have everything ready to approve tonight, but we might be to the point where we got everything, but he's got to make a few changes in his drawings, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the discussion tonight. Now I'm trying to kill more time. <laughs> There's nothing scheduled for August 10th yet either. Right. So one of the two, I think we're going to try. I think we are. I heard at least two members aren't going to make the, the 27th. What are two? So we're going to do our we're going to do our best to get out of one of these summer meetings if we can. Uh, <laughs> Two things I should tell the chair. Yeah. Uh, I may be traveling that weekend, so it might be a problem getting back. Uh, never know. Uh, for the 27th, and then tonight I'm expecting a work call that I need to take. So I haven't, got, haven't came in yet. So I apologize in advance if it does come in. <coughs> so why don't we take a few minute recess? Obviously, you want to kind of look over there to see whether or not. There, 
so they're talking about solar. Are they meeting? They're, they're going okay. to talk about first. Are we going to have ComCom discuss anything more? Right at the last meeting, they were there was a lot of open discussion. Yeah, I, what I asked the ComCom chairman is if they could come up with their decision on how many feet they're going to allow for the wetlands. Yeah. That would be really good to have at this point. Agreed. And, 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 and I mean, quite frankly, until they make that decision, I don't know how we issue a. Uh, don't disagree. Uh, we can't prove a site plan. I mean, as I was yeah. on a, talking to some of the uh, members, and they're readjusting and uh, making sure that the, the feedback from our whole entire group is given to them where. A lot of people felt that maybe it was too close to, to the wetland, and then they're adjusting, and they're talking about that now. Yeah. And so, who suggests both sides, or is the I, marathon club suggesting? It sounds like a little. It sounds like it's not much. But I'm sure it's going back. And forth. <laughs> okay. I think at this point, why don't we uh, stand in recess, and because there's no use, sure. all of us kind of. Hanging around? Hanging around until we'll see what the solar people is. I'm, I'm going to go over there and, and try to... 10? Yeah, let's come back and everyone come back after... Uh, you go ask about building a swing set in the or something. Uh, <laughs> a, uh, kind of take a potty break, yeah, I guess. Five minutes. Yeah. 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 Okay, welcome back from the recess of the... Uh, July 13th planning board meeting. Uh, we we're kind of waiting to see our next applicant, uh, how they how they did over next door at the Conservation Commission. And anyway, we've got six members here today. Uh, let's see. We need, we're obviously missing three. I think one of those three is now disqualified from voting because they've missed too many meetings for the Mullen Law, or, or we lost one, or just one, right? Mm -hmm. So it's your option, obviously, as to whether you want to go with six. This special permit requires an affirmative vote of six people, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, whether we get to there tonight. And the two of the people can then uh, watch the tape and then vote on it at the next meeting if they certify they watch the tape. So I assume you want to continue? Uh, we'll continue. Okay. But that is your option. Okay, so this is the continued public hearing special permit application, Marathon Solar LLC, East Main Street, and it's also continued public hearing uh, for the stormwater management permit application for the same location. This is a proposed uh, three plus or minus megawatt uh, commercial solar power uh, uh, installation on approximately 15 acres of land. So, let's see. Let, why don't we start with what happened next door? I wish I could tell you they voted. Uh, they took it under advisement, and we're going to be meeting with them again after this meeting. Um, they'll pick it up again. So, they didn't get to a final conclusion on the setback. I think they're hovering around 50 feet uh, at the moment, um, but we haven't gotten them. They haven't gotten to that final conclusion, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, then we will probably will be in a continuation mode uh, we if, because we kind of need to know that number before we approve what the site looks like. I, we understand. Yeah. Okay, let's try to get a lot of the other stuff resolved. Point of clarification. Yeah. Did you mean you'll meet with us, then tonight you'll meet with them again? Yeah, we were sort of... Uh, they had two times on there. Yeah, two times. They gave us two slots just in case they needed more time. Nice. How was the discussion going? Um, or don't you? Or can I, can I, you tell? I'd say that they like the project. Uh, they're sure. struggling with the setback issue. Uh, that's, that's kind of how it's going. Okay. Let's try to get through a lot of the stuff that does not require a lot of... Or let's get through things that... If there are plan changes you need to do, you'll have some feedback from us as to which way to go with the plans, and that will that will kind of help things along. 
one of our requirements, uh, having gone through site plan review, uh, but Elaine, though, this is not appealable to the Board of Appeals, No, correct? this is a special permit and storm library. So, so that, that, that requirement for site plan review are, are not, not, not there. Plan, right. Okay, that's good to know. That makes it a little bit easier from our standpoint. Okay. I think at the last time we put together, or first time we put together a detailed discussion outline, we're going to continue on the outline that we're at. Uh, we had kind of got into some discussions of the view shed from East Main Street the last time, and we kind of stopped it right at that point. Plus, we had talked about what the setbacks is for CONCOM uh, with that. So, uh, I'm going to skip over storm a lot of management because from what I can tell from the consultants, everyone is pretty happy with that at this point. So, let's get to other items that, uh, that might take some changes. Um, let's start with, I go with item D, which is a screening from future town land adjacent. So, we're really talking about the view from the west. Right. And, uh, I see we have some representatives from Parks and Rec here at this point. Uh, and, uh, oh, uh, did you want to get them to say anything? I, well, <laughs> well, Bob, you, you wanted to say something the last time, and, and we well, didn't have time, but <coughs> today you got lots of time. Well, I appreciate a lot of time. Um, since the last meeting, we had a, an opportunity to walk the property with Rich, myself, uh, Tim Kildoff, and Jay Golfing, our director. And I think Rich did a nice job in indicating the screening that would be viewed from from the ground level, from, from the middle of the property. Uh, it was our hope, Rich, that we were going to have a commission meeting tonight so we could get consensus from the rest of the concerned group. And that meeting was canceled. So it, it, I don't think the continuance is going to hurt as much because we'll be able to have a consensus by then. Okay, okay. okay. Um, it'd probably be unfair at this particular point for me to represent the commission without consulting them with their thoughts and the, <coughs> and the information that you sent over because we haven't discussed it at all. Okay. Um, recognize, with all that being said, recognizing that uh, a plan that our commission reviewed in conjunction with the 26.2 Foundation and the Marathon uh, Museum, not the museum, but the Marathon Center, needs to be taken into consideration because that's a very attractive project that the uh, Commission has endorsed and uh, most recently endorsed with its new members. Mm -hmm. So the height of that building and the layout of the property needs to be taken into account. Um, Ken, just to continue, and Rich, you had offered that you know, based on the acceptance of the plan, that the planning board had write in, wanted to write in some additional screening, which would take place on our property, I will we'll present to the commission and right. hear their thoughts. Okay. So as long as that's still a viable opportunity. Yes, and I'll make sure it's on the record here tonight. Okay. Uh, um, so, so what uh, I'm talking about is, um, in addition to the screening that you see on the plan, we've added um, more shrub plantings along that that edge on the plan yeah. to make it uh, screen. And this was a panoramic view that I can pass this around from I the ground level. Yeah, we have copies. Yeah, um, and it sort of represents that, that you wouldn't be able to see the panels from, from the ground there. And, and what Bob's saying is that uh, if the building were higher, it'd be nice to have some taller trees around that building to help screen the view from the building to potentially see any solar. And we offer that if the Planning Board wanted to make that a condition that at a future time when the uh, Marathon Center is built that there would be a contribution from the solar project to uh, add additional taller uh, tree plantings around the, uh, the Marathon Museum between it and the solar facility to, uh, to provide that additional level of screening. And so we're, we're fine with that condition. Well, that, that was an offer you made and we'll be yeah. sure to take that to the yeah. commission. And right. so there, Obviously, going to discuss that further, yeah. but that, that is definitely our on the table. Okay. Just as a point of clarification, when you talk about a building for dimensions, are we talking one story, two stories? Has there been any discussion about that, or is it? 
use some of the uh, the initial plan because of the uh, roadside appeal mm -hmm. to the building. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, yeah. And the height of that the height of that building. We're we're on our initial conversation, you know, similar to the conversation we, we had with the hockey group yep. when we partnered with that. So to answer your question, no no definitive height. Okay. I see in this thing this yeah. drawing there's a like a line of shrubs kind of in black right along the property yeah line. those are cedar cedar trees uh, and they're planted closely enough together to mesh into a hedge uh, okay and then uh, i provided sort of an example of what that looks like the one with the sheep i think <laughs> has a, a backdrop of those uh, a hedgerow back there so just to give you a sense of how well that is capable of screening uh, solar from the rest of whatever's else going on on the other side of it. Um, yeah. So that was the purpose of the sheep, the sheep photo. <laughs> okay. So I thought we were the other kind. Uh, the so so what what height would these trees be initially? Uh, eight feet initially, and then they'll grow bigger and bushier, and they'll mesh together. They won't be as square as you see in that one depiction, but they'll be. Uh, you know, a naturalized hedge. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, something along the lines of what you're seeing there. Definitely higher than the, the solar. Mm -hmm. uh, so. And that's kind of flat, and that kind of screams the Im immediate part of it. It's extremely flat out there, yeah, yeah. from that vantage. On, on that portion. So what kind of trees or shrubs do you see? Um, they would be a, a combination of uh, eastern red cedar and then probably white cedar, white in, cedar. In, in along the wetland edge there. And they will grow how high over time? They have the potential to grow quite high. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, you've seen I mean, arborvitaes and things like that that can grow 20, 30 feet tall. Okay. But there would probably be, be you know, maintaining them in the, say, 12 to 15 foot range. Because they right, can so get they a little get, unwieldy, right? Uh, so that they stay, yeah, uh, with the snow and everything. You, you don't want them to get broken by the snow. Right. So. Are those are those trees like that that Concom's going to let you plant in their buffer zone? They're native. Um, so in terms of the red cedar, um, it's a, it's a native tree that was proposed in the upland buffer zone previously, and we hadn't heard any concerns about that. I mean, I would consider it a mitigation planting in that area in particular because there is no woody vegetation now. Um, and then in terms of the white cedar, that's a wetland plant. And again, that wetland is not, it doesn't have woody vegetation, so it, it would be mitigation, enhancement of the wetland. Do you know if that area's got soil or is it on the on the granite fill that no, came from no, down from the No, it's got soil. That side of the pond and and running where those are shown is uh, plant plantable. Plant okay. medium, medium there. Okay, so basically parks and rec the the hedge sounds reasonable at this point but you don't have a full commission we don't but have a full commission uh voter opinion but to uh fran's question about when we talk about the international marathon center and the plans that our commission approved it'd probably be a good idea for the planning board to kind of take a look at the breadth of the project to, to understand the investment that will be made there in conjunction with the the view shed from the solar uh farm so if yeah. we have time, um, Tim, Tim can maybe go through a con couple concept drawings uh, representing the 26.2 foundation. I don't have a problem with that. Like I'm okay it. with that. I, I had a question about the building, but Tim may answer it in his presentation. Why, why don't we just do an overview, because we're not here really to talk much about that, but I think putting it into context might not be the worst thing. I can, if, 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 if that's your wish. You know, and I would... I, I think I would only preface any remarks with an apology first, because uh, we had a chance to walk the site with Rich the other day, found him to be, uh, and this is important to me, a gentleman to begin with, uh, and that's important. Uh, but in fairness to uh, the proponents, they haven't they had the, the, the opportunity to, to, to look at the enormity. We, we presented a plan to the planning board several months ago. Um, in, would, would 
be more than happy to come back and, and get into details. But just to put it put it in perspective, this is the if you recall the, the hockey rink that was going to go in about here on that property. Mm -hmm. This is the Spangler property over here. We're in discussions with uh, with uh, Mr. Spangler to purchase that property. He has his, his homes over here. This is about 15 acres. This is tough, uh, uh, tough terrain. It's pretty high. Um, and our original plan was to collaborate with the, the hockey people and create an entrance point, mutual entrance point. The, the thing that became obvious to us, and it's still our intent to, to, to work this piece of property, but as you, you start to look at the position in, in terms of the, the course itself, the, the viewscape and the ideal location is somewhere in here for that building. There's a lot of work that has to be done. And, and you have to take a leap of faith at some point here because the ideal would be to utilize this space. This pond is spectacular. Uh, we see and we would see an opportunity to enhance that and then the connect, connecting these the trails up in here, which has been talked about on this board a lot, and creating some sort of hub is phenomenal. So this is a quantum leap. We're not, we're not, we're not talking about a, a small building. We're talking about a 20,000 square foot building. Uh, that's that's a substantial museum. These are the these are the components uh, that would be part of it. Uh, and when we talk about international international marathon center, we're talking about a museum, a hall of fame, and then something we just describe loosely as something. And that something is an education component. It's a it's a component. It's a substantial piece. We're talking about building a facility that's going to attract people to Hopkinton. will have a dramatic impact on downtown and the surrounding areas. Uh, this is roughly a $25 million facility, $30 million facility. Uh, our intent is not to look for public money, but to uh, but, but this would be funded privately. We've started, uh, we've had a feasibility study done on whether or not this could work in Hopkinton. And to make a long story short, the feasibility study says with the demographics within an hour of Hopkinton, the demographics say that this would work if it's not small. If it's small, forget it. Our, our neighbors in Ashland want to have a, want to take over the BFW Hall and put some artifacts in there. That's great, but uh, it won't work. We're also not talking about a Boston Marathon Museum. We're talking about an International Marathon Center. And as you know, Hopkinton already has a relationship with Marathon Greece. The selectmen tomorrow night will avoid the vote on, on uh, a relationship with Shaman China. We're in discussions with Toronto, and we have uh, ongoing uh, discussions with uh, the Marine Corps Marathon. So we want to build a network that's headquartered in Hopkinton that connects communities, not not just the race itself. So it's a substantial uh, substantial project, a lot of work that has to be done, but it's pretty tough to argue with. Uh, uh, with finding a different place in Hopkinton other than on the race course itself. 25 to 30 million dollars, 20 to 25,000 square feet, uh, creating a, a focal point for, uh, for not just marathoning but endurance sports globally. Questions from the chair? Go ahead. Uh, is there a uh, Marathon Runners Hall of Fame already? Or That's a good question. That this will be a I wouldn't recommend it, but there's a, a long distance uh, running hall of fame in Utica, New York. Have you ever been to Utica? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you have. There's a running, uh, it, and it's um, in disrepair, uh, and so the long and the short answer is no. And, uh, so this possibly could be that, maybe. Uh, that's the intent. And the important thing to remember is we're talking about connecting communities. That each of these uh, major marathons in the world are all siloed. Uh, they're really not connected. Uh, so we're talking about connecting the, the communities using the marathon as a platform. Another question, two more questions. Uh, will there be solar panels on the road? <laughs> we're not at that point, but I would guess there would be. <laughs> and lastly, can you point out on the other, on the other chart where the uh, uh, this field is compared to the building? Because I, I don't. Which you, you, oh, this sorry. Is, this is the area we were talking about. Yeah, that's right. You this see the, the pond, pond, pond on the right? Pond on the right, another pond. On the right, yeah. right yep. And not that one. The legacy yep. farmer's piece that the, the, the town will be getting. Uh,
Tim, Tim, you're not yet shown the one with the, the building moved to the front and center of the parcel? No, yeah. and I get it. I, I, again, Ken, I want to be yeah. honest. I, I, I started by apologizing because yeah. it's really not. I, I, Okay. I didn't feel comfortable doing that. Okay. We'd have to come. I'd be, we'd we'd be happy to come back to the planning board at your convenience. Okay. And, and lay out what is a, a, a far more dramatic plan that talks about taking this space, moving the museum here, creating trails, connections back, uh, uh, volleyball courts. There has to be. This is the, This is not a, a 25 car parking lot either that we're going to have to put in here. So it's a it's a very different change, and I'd be happy to come back and. Okay, yeah, I share that, that sure. concept with you. That, that deserves a separate uh, discussion. Yes. Just a question, and, and maybe this is that discussion, um, whether it's this position that you're talking about or if it's a different placement of the building, will it be viewable from the race course? Because I think that there should be some kind of viewability from the race course. If it's here, difficult. I think if you were coming from the east, and you looked uh, it, 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 briefly. There's a little bit of a dip, and you you, you, can, yeah. you can see some of it, but they're dramatic. You can imagine what that would look like. Uh, positioned uh, relatively close to the to the road, but not on top of the road either. Right. That no, wouldn't no. be our proposal. Today, and, you know, you all, Rich knows right. about this. There's a, there's there's it's all these wetlands in here and. Are you not talking about disturbing up, anything? Up the driveway. I'm sorry? But banners hanging off of light poles up, up the driveway that would be very Here. dramatic looking from the road. This is a major departure from anything we're used to. We're used to having the marathon here one day a year. We're talking about building something that, that's world class, uh, that will attract uh, attention and is going to attract and is going to attract people to sustain itself. I mean, it, it, we have, we've done, uh, we have uh, uh, numbers on uh, in terms of construction. We also have uh, an operating plan. We've got a pretty good idea of what it's going to take to keep this thing going. So uh, it needs people. It needs people coming in. You mean you've done a good job of making the one-day race a week-long event with festivities and, and activities and presentations okay. Okay. year-round. So let's uh, let's move back to more of the project that we have in front of us at this point. Okay, so basically, if, if, I, if I go to item D for the screening for this case, and right now we have a proposal for some eight-foot trees, I guess is where we're at, with the potential for, and maybe I'm misstating it, or maybe I'm not understanding it correctly, the potential for some funding that if some other ones were needed to be put on, I'll say our side of the fence, that might be doable. Right, to, shoot, to basically provide some additional screening from the future museum, if, if need be, and where needed, uh, between the, the building and the total. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question about that. One of the things was mentioned is the cedar trees can grow 20 feet tall, yet they'll be maintained around 12, 15 feet. One of the things that gets me it gets me nervous if we're talking about this, is that, uh, you know, a 12-foot tree, and we're talking a 30-foot building, if they, 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 if, if they're going to be maintained, they can definitely tie up. They want to keep them narrow, whether it's one thing or a height. I don't know if that would be a 12-foot. That's just... I think a lot of it will depend on what happens next door, because you need... You can't create shade, I don't think, is the problem. I, I think that's maybe. We, have to protect, we do have to protect from shading, um, but, you know, it could be that 15 feet or, or more is fine. I mean, it depends where those trees are relative to the solar panels, but yeah. the other thing is that that's why we offered. I don't think they yet know exactly where that museum <coughs> would be sited, so that the idea was to provide some kind of a dynamic uh, condition in here that allowed for planting around that building that provides the additional screening that might be needed, but gives some flexibility toward the siting of that building so that, you know, we're not putting trees in the wrong spot, for instance. Uh, Could yep. follow up? Now, will, will this be, you know, are we just going to have six or eight foot everywhere else in that one spot? <coughs> or, or, you know, I think that, that when we were writing this, this um, bylaw on Zach, 
that we were trying to uh, make sure that uh, we're, cause we're, we're actually we originally were thinking about smaller projects and make sure that, 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 they, that the towns didn't have to see these the, you know, these things from from their, their homes or from adjacent buildings. Very and true. I just want to make sure that, that we're, we're sure. doing enough for, sure. for the rest of the town. But everybody's talking about view shed, view shed, view shed for years and years and years, all through Western nurseries. Now it seems like, okay, we're putting up solar, so we're supposed to be green. So let's look at them. Why, why, don't, why don't you point out on the, on the, what you proposed for yeah. the trees? Uh, so, the view, there is a very little view. We went through a demonstration o over the last couple hearings of the very limited amount, if any, view from Main Street into the site. Uh, because the vegetation has grown up to be quite substantial along Main Street, uh, even more than shown on this aerial photo. But this whole uh, edge is proposed to be planted with uh, with cedars all the way up to the woodland and past it, and all the way down to where the last potential panels would go down here. And then uh, this northern edge is also uh, screened, and we worked with Roy and the folks at Legacy Farms on coming up with an appropriate set of conditions up there so that the future development to the north is screened and can't see into the solar. And they, we have an agreement about that. So um, there is no view from this side. It's forested. This is forested. And then we're screening this entire view from any future development here. And this is forested here. So I, I think it does cover all of the bases as far as screening. Uh, that's what we were trying to do. Just put you a little quick forward. Is all the light that goes into these absorbed? Yes. Or is there any required? Okay, I just want to make sure that, that all of a sudden you put these up and then somebody, you know, down. We and, talked uh, about that, yeah, I think, okay. in our last, first hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Wilson Street all of a sudden doesn't have their, their eyebrows in. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, okay. And, and, but that goes up the hill a little bit, but. When you say it goes up the hill, what do you mean? The topography, the land, topography the, where the solar panel is going to be. Yeah. So right, then you'd have to be doubly careful in terms of you might not see it right through the tree line, but if you're looking up and the topography lends itself in an incline, you're going yeah, to see it to a certain extent. We actually, I looked at that carefully when we went out and did the panoramic views uh, that we sent you, and it is very difficult to see up into that because of the way the trees are configured there. If you add the, uh, if you look at the one that's screened, this view, mm -hmm. there's a, this would be more or less where the hill that you could potentially see through to the hill. And even, you know, you're really not seeing the ground. This is, I was standing on the ground, it's very flat looking, looking west to east and did the panoramic and uh, and these are approximately eight foot shrubs and they'll be taller once they're fully grown. Uh, it's going to be tough to see anything from there on the ground, when you're on the ground. It's, it's very, very flat. Um, so we think this is going to do the job. I mean, we, you know, in the future, if it seems like there's still too much view, uh, there certainly could be some stuff added up in that area. So uh, I just, I, I do, I'll be honest up front, I do have a concern in terms of if you're at the Marathon Museum, and I think that is a potential crown jewel of this town, flat out. Mm -hmm. If anybody's looking at it, if I go up in a tower, I go to the second floor, and I kind of do a panoramic, I see the race, and then I see these panels, that, that takes away a lot, I think. Um, just, I'll just throw it out for there. For you personally, but... Uh, yeah, for me personally. That's all I can... That's all I, I can hear. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, you know, condition us to, to screen it, and and we can, we can we'll work within that. So, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I think... Uh, Okay. I, I don't know what else we can really talk about on the west side at this point without parts of it kind of going in and we, we've got the, the, the line, of, line of trees and then cash for future if needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's go to the next item. D. Uh, e on this, which is the poles and wires going into the site. And why don't you, Rich, tell us what 
what what what your latest proposal is at this point, and then we've had some discussions with the late has with NSTAR. So yeah, absolutely, and and uh, it might be easiest if which you, which one of the there's a, there's a mini like an inset plan almost a, a close up version if you want to look at that of where the the access road comes in. It's a little easier to understand. I don't know if you all have this one. Probably. Right? Uh, it says utility connection on the board. Uh, what does it say? Yes. <laughs> it says utility connection. Okay. <laughs> right. So, um, and I'll, I'll just speak to it uh, a little bit. Uh, I had some conversations with Ken last week about concerns about the the way we originally had two sets of poles coming across the street, and then. There has to be, the, the wires split out, and I guess according to NSTAR uh, and our electrical engineers, they split out and go to a sort of a six pole configuration, then they go into the transformer, and then they go underground into the site from there. So um, originally we were up close to the road because we imagined that you'd want to minimize the, un the amount of above ground. But in, in this case, interestingly, um, the, the topography falls away from the road, it drops about 20 feet. But when you leave the road, it drops precipitously into a very heavily wooded area. And um, Ken was thinking, well, maybe it's better to consolidate that onto a single pole and move the six pole configuration further in so that it's completely out of view, which we thought, okay, uh, talk to NSTAR, talk to well, Eversource, I guess, and, and uh, our engineer, and they said, that's fine. Um, so that's, that's what this drawing represents, um, and it, it's basically a single pole. And, and if you go out there now, this is what it looks like at the point where, where we would cross the, uh, the road. One, uh, one of my concerns that again. is that if you had the two poles and you separated them by, what's the distance between the two poles? It's pretty close. I mean, it's probably 8, 10 feet, something like that. So yeah. At least. Well, by the time you get to the 15-15 rule, you're clearing a 50-foot right. spot right into it. With the one pole, basically, and right along the side of the road, you're, you're at best clearing 25 feet, probably. Right. you got to clear the, the, the road, or the driveway, which is probably 12 feet or something like that, I would imagine. Yeah, it's, and, it's, it's minimal gravel right. driveway. And then, and then they're going to ask for 15 feet on the other side because it's utility pole. So the, interestingly, this is the, so the pole that I'm sh you're seeing here is on the south side of Main Street. And there's a, there's a, one of those cable arm, uh, cable stays that goes to a pole that it's hard to see on the other side. So there is a pole over there. And uh, it was just a real loose conversation with Eversource about it. That we would be able to replace that pole potentially and just go with a new pole to support the crossing and take that and it drops down there and goes into the site and so and then we go underground at the point we're showing so i think it would be virtually the same configuration a single pole but with wire more wires on it than the single stay and then uh given all the tree cover around there, I think it would be very difficult to see in here. It's basically a gravel driveway that turns, so you can't see all the way into the site. Uh, so that, that was the idea, uh, and hopefully that that yeah. meets with your acceptance. Well, we're, we're going to talk about it until we get to a consensus yeah, here. Yeah. Elaine, why don't you uh, let them know what you found out from Eversource? I did see Rich before the meeting this evening, so I did tell him what Eversource had, had indicated, that it is possible to go underground across East Main here, so they did have their work order, so they were familiar with that, so um, something to follow up with them. Right, and, and we talked to them last week, so it wasn't the same person, I don't think, but uh, the folks we deal with are in the Interconnection Distributed Generation Group, and uh, the concern he expressed was if, if you, we studied it as overhead, if you make us restudy it, we have to reopen the study, and it could take a lot of time, and he really got, got us scared. <laughs> so time is our enemy, and this, there's a window to get solar done before the incentives run out, and make it impossible to build solar here. Um, so we're 
you know, we're very afraid that we would lose the construction season and then next year the incentives are scheduled to evaporate. So we're very worried about preserving schedule and any excuse you give at Eversource to uh, take more time, they've typically taken more time. They have a lot of backlog. So we're, we have a full agreement with them based on going over the street. Uh, and we would be able to proceed right away, presuming we get permits from the town. But if they, they the, the, the concern was if you have to go back and then reopen the study, it could cause a significant delay. So that was the feedback we got, but you got some other feedback that may have said, hey, we're, we're going to well, give you the, both well, versions. The study is part of that. Though, yeah, so, it, yeah, so it's it's a hard, I don't know exactly which Eversource person to, uh, to rely on in that case, but the one that we've been dealing one with is the one who deals with the interconnection. So he said, you know, look, uh, is it possible to go underground? Yes, it's possible. He said, I can't tell you how long it would take us to get to the design, the conclusion on that, and I can't tell you how much that would cost. He said it would probably be three to four times the cost, and I don't know how long it would take us to do it. And so that was the concern we had was time. See, uh, see that's the part that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Having an engineering degree is one of the things. Electricity doesn't matter whether it goes overhead or, or in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pipe. I don't know either. He just I told mean, me that. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not making it up. I know. <laughs> the interconnection is the interconnection. You're going to end up at the same spot on the pole. And whether it goes from here to there, I mean, this is, this is, this is a no-brainer, I mean, for, for that. And, and quite frankly, it cuts at least 15, maybe 20 feet of vegetation. And, and, I, and I, I'll say you won't see it if it goes underground where you got the single pole. Well, they do have to come back up they, they, again. But they can come back up on the other side. they have to put the, uh, the transformers in this. They have to have uh, sure. you need uh, and, 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 and safety and equipment on the and, other and, side. And, so and it can't you be all underground. Wait, right. But you've got that hidden off the, you know, the area when I'm going 35 miles an hour. Or right. actually, in that spot, you might be going five miles an hour, but... Uh, I mean, I challenge you to <coughs> drive by and see if you could see it. I, I did that, and I looked, took pictures both ways, and, and you see the edge of trees as you drive by. Um, right. And there's nobody living on the other side. Here, they're further down uh, yeah. the driveway, so... Well, the, the key is, though, that Eversource, and they're after us to, to take every tree down in their scenic roads, so... <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean, they're, you know, they're looking at 15 feet on each side of that, that pole. I don't, I don't. That's their their policy at this point. Oh, I see what you're saying. And, um, and they and, and they will enforce it on the private land. Yeah. Uh, and, and so so it's a thirty foot swash. Yeah. Well, well, we have the road on one side, so uh, we could be right up against that road and so minimize you, that. You're saying you stick a pole over here? They're going to clear thirty feet. I don't know that they do that. They're they're going to go fifteen feet on each side right. of that pole. With a single one, it's much better than the doubles that was originally proposed because it takes out 10 more feet of clearing. Right. Uh, but you're still looking at 30 feet of clearing, you know, 15 feet on each side of the pole. Well, this, this, these poles can be right up against the gravel road. There's no reason they sure. can't be. So right. we would, the clearing would really be on one side to the extent that they need us to clear. The additional clearing. Yeah. Right. So, but, but, you know, only clearing the 12 feet for the road there's lots of little farm roads that go, you know, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't hurt my view shed too much. That's yeah. kind of what's there. I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is when you drive by there, um, yeah. first of all, it's a speedy part of the road. But second yeah, of all, no, you'd no, have to, you'd have to take by a, there at 3 you'd have, to look, <laughs> you'd have to take a hard look to your right to even pick up yep. what's there. It's, it's going to look like a driveway, basically. That, and that's what we'd like. Yeah. And, and but a driveway with overhead poles, to my preference, is to try to explore going underground for that first, until you, you have to come back up to put the switches up, up above. I my, guess my concern, excuse me, is if, if ever source is going to clear, you know, whether it's 15 feet, 24 feet, 30 feet, and there, there goes a protective view shed. Um, I mean, you're going you're gonna to sit there at, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you're sitting there. You're not moving. You're not moving at, at 30 miles an hour. Well, that, that part's not his problem. Our, the traffic is no, our that's problem. No, that's right, but well, that's I guess our concern. The other factor to keep in mind is the road does curve as it goes in, and so does yeah. the pole line. So 
and this is this is much more wooded now. This is thick woods. I just walked in there last week. Uh, the trees are yeah. 30 feet yeah. high. Yeah. Uh, the, the view shed essentially that you're going to see is the pine grove. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's where you're going to be looking down that yeah. beginning of the road. The road curves, as uh, yeah. uh, as he just said, as Rich just said, and. Uh, you know, you're not going to see into the solar site from that area. Yeah. You're going to be looking at the mine grove that's there. And, and, and two rows of poles, which I happen to have in my backyard on the power line. And I'll tell you, that's the ugliest feature of my property. But uh, and Keep in mind, it does drop from the edge of the road. It drops approximately 20 feet as you get, you know, just off the road. And so okay. it's going to be down as well. Okay. Well, I'd like to continue to pursue with Eversource and maybe have them come to our next meeting if we, if we need to. I don't know that you'll get them to come to your meeting, honestly. They, well, they, they said they were coming tonight, and then at the end they, they kind of backed out because the one person was, <coughs> that, that comes. Reasons, yeah, it was personal. We, we've had them here before. Okay. We have maybe better opportunity. I didn't say we get any poles moved any faster, but we... <laughs> uh, I mean, the, yeah. is the objective to get them to say what exactly? That they could that put it under... I think they've we, told you they could put it underground. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's more or less, I guess, your call about what you want to condition us on. Okay. Uh, I'd like to do something similar as we do with the another developer, the same kind of issue. Uh, the same, you saw the same thing you were, and then we have information, so they're going to circle back with, I think you want to say NSTAR, uh, Eversource, and then, uh, but I'm not, no, I don't know if I'm saying this the right way, so maybe Ken can advise. So we approved with the tenant that if, if they have to change from below ground to above ground, this is a matter of, if, if, it, if Eversource can't do it for whatever reason, this is a matter of uh, quick change, uh, administrative change as opposed to uh, yeah. We could we could do something similar. <coughs> we approved another conditioner on another guy, same issue uh, earlier tonight. We could do something similar to that. But basically that approved it. It's an underground with the insurances that if technically it can't be done, uh, that we would could reverse ourselves on it. Well, well technically it can be done, but well, the way Eversource works and if it, well, whatever reasons they can't do it, or well, I, I, you know, it, it, in the spirit of cooperation, I think we might we might go along with such a condition. So, uh, okay, uh, you know, we understand the concern. Okay, um, I'm going to skip okay. skip to item G. Because we got uh, Roger here on this picture here. Can you show the planning board members where we think Rock, Lucky Rock is on this picture? <laughs> Nobody's been able to find it that I can see. <laughs> there's a ledge. Or maybe there. Tim's here. Well, there's a ledge there. The, the, is, it, is it the ledge that you you see? Show me the, what, what what picture is. It? He's the expert. <laughs> he's, well, he's the owner. Thinks. But. <laughs> Uh, if in the interim, I might ask suggest this. I asked the Beals and Thomas surveyors who worked on legacy farms and surveyed this entire thing for years and years, and they uh, they chuckled and said, uh, "We looked and looked, and we could not find Lucky Rock." <laughs> so I don't know if it's just hard to find or where it is. But uh, well, Lucky Rock. Yeah, I always thought it was that ledge, but I don't know. Yeah, I've always thought it was the ledge too. Uh, the the. Actually, the only fellow that I ever said uh, heard that said they knew where it was was Joe Coyle because he wanted to carve uh, something exactly. into the ledge there. Mm -hmm. And there is a um, a streak of, uh, of white stone that one could see a number of years ago. I don't know if you can still see it along that ledge. So I still don't know why it's called Lucky Rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the story is it was the start of the marathon when it first moved to Hopkinton, correct? Well, the folklore that I heard, and, and, and uh, Raj is right, uh, it was uh, the folklore story I heard was that it was Coyle who, who went down there and kind of said, we found the, the quartz no. strip and, and said, well, Lucky Rock. But you're right. 
But that start of the marathon, if you look at the old pictures, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough to look at it. It's that, that beautiful pine grove that's up there. A little further before, uh, I think Roy's putting stone walls up in there. Okay. Uh, not, it's right going yep. east. Yep. It's right on the edge of that, that beautiful pine grove. Okay. That's my best recollection. And that's If you look at the, the photos of the early starts of the marathon here, it's about that neck of the woods. And, and right, we did walk uh, where we're <coughs> proposing to put the uh, driveway, and there's nothing rocky there. So, so basically, the driveway isn't going to impact any natural feature right. like that. So the, the other story that I heard as we were researching some of the deeds was that Lucky Rock was covered over when they moved the road. <laughs> could be. Could be. <laughs> we could, we could pretty much find out where, where the starting line was. We can figure that oh, one sure. out. If you I got point fairly close to where it was because I, I remember. There you go. I, 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 I should make that give us that assignment. We'll figure that out. Okay, Tim, you got that one. I, I just didn't want to put a roadway over what might have been. The roadway is going to be east of that. I think. So. Yeah. Okay. No. Let's. I got let's, a picture here from 1930 something. <laughs> can expand it. It doesn't show the rock unless it's uh, up the road of Biddy's. Okay, well, why don't we call that one closed? Because it doesn't look like we're impacting anything on that. Um, while I've got... Uh, it's just a lot more telephone poles, too, on both sides of the street. Okay. Um, we got almost all the players on here to do H, which is a sidewalk along the front of the parcel. The town is, or actually, I think Roy's is going to be doing a sidewalk eventually along connecting from the athletic parcel to Legacy Farms Road North. Is you'd be happy with some help on that, though. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, what does your route through here? Uh, actually, that's going to be a conversation we have with Roger because of quote unquote lucky rock. We need to go behind that. And there's, there's a whole pine grove in uh, vegetation along East Main Street that it would make more sense to go behind all that. And it may buffer on the edge of Roger's land rather than cutting all that down. But that would actually exacerbate the problem of potentially looking at solar panels. So I think we need to map that out. We actually did that recently. I can actually bring that to the planning board. So if, if you guys can take an action to kind of talk about that between now and our next meeting and, and okay. come up with an idea, we'll bring that to you. And, and maybe we can. And in fact, we should work with Richard lay on his plan too, so you can see the relationship with the sidewalk relative to the driveway access and the trees. Yeah. And I, I just don't want to create any. I mean, that that is going to be a tough tough section of sidewalk to get done along there, and I just don't want to make it any worse than it is. But uh, but it would be kind of neat if it kind of went by the ledge or something like that. I, I don't know. In Parks and Rec, you guys got to figure out how to get it across, and you got the town money to get it across your parcel because you're going to be doing the wetlands. Conveniently, <coughs> we reached out to Beals and Thomas for the original proposal for that. Yeah. Um, and since they're involved with the property and, and knowledgeable, I think that's we have a proposal for them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to hit all the items that might have to change a drawing or two before our next meeting. Um, let's talk about fences and poles. <coughs> Did everyone get this one, Elaine? No. And then we'll pass it down. This is a fence that Roy put up behind the sewer plant without the top pole. <coughs> and he didn't have the critter control, but he put it up past the pad. And as you can see, without the top pole, the fences slip over the winter. 
and my question is 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 that something we're going to allow for the security fences to whether or not that top pole was there and is there a detail on that fence pole that maybe you've figured out how to engineer it better than what they did back there i believe there's a tension wire that goes across on the top of our detail i'm not sure yeah we have a tension pole yeah. here too unfortunately yeah if i can make a comment on that because we're going to be on this fence the wire side thing, what it requires is a bolt in the back of each post, so the wire is taut from post to post and goes from yeah. If one does that, you won't have that side of it. The reason why we suggested there not be a top post, top rail, if you will, is because whenever you look at a chain link fence, especially one of this magnitude, the first thing your eyes going to go to on the entire side is that top horizontal pipe. The vertical poles tend to disappear from the horizontal ones don't. Does anyone have the detail on the fence in the drawings? Uh, I can pull out the plan set if yeah, you'd like. That'd be great. Can we just be around the circumference of the entire property. Yes. That's fine. It will get uh, embedded in the meadow grasses that are going to grow up, so it'll be softened substantially. To have the top hole would really be for to maintain the that yeah. there's no slippage and it just yeah they usually they they form wire wire. Band it to the, oh, yeah. that top link. You know, yeah. Found it. Spring tension line doesn't doesn't have a good detail as to how you would hold it up. <clears throat> Which is obviously missing on this one. So yeah. Obviously, it's volatile. We have from there, but this was the fence detail. Um, uh, this was the opening, so it shows the tension across. Yeah, I'm sure we could add a add to the spec that there. Well, the one right below that, I think, is the the fence. Look, look, one right below that. Yep. So it's gate and fence. Right. There needs to be a detail that makes that fence work because I think as, as as drawn it won't work. We can certainly specify that there be, you know, bolts in each hole. Or drill a hole in each post or something like that. To really, yeah. Yeah, they, they still have what size post is it three inch? Two. Um, two. Two. Because they sell a yeah. they sell a round bracket that you put on the pole, you bolt it, and you bolt the wire to that so it can't go anywhere because it's bolted to the Okay. And uh, it's very effective. You can look for the hang on the wire if you can go now. If you want, I'll get you a detail. But, uh, okay. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're fine with doing that. Yep. Whatever uh, holds the fence up best is fine. I mean, you don't want it to start sagging and no. block no. The, the critters. <laughs> Everyone doesn't want to go have to fix it. it straight, too. <laughs> you know? yeah. We'll put those on that fence also. Is, is anyone, if, if the detail is there on the fence, is, are everyone okay with, with just leaving the wire? Okay. Okay, I'm just cherry picking these at this point. Item F. Can Performance with the FERC regulations, I think that's not necessarily applicable to this project. And at this point, as far as you're concerned, Roy, your agreement and the request for conditions of approval have been put into the plan set, I believe. I have not studied the plan set, but I assume, Richard, you can clarify that the agreement we have is not only the plan set, but it will be a condition of the planning board. It is, and it's the, the same. Yep. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, it, it didn't include it as a condition because it was already incorporated into the plan. Right. So if everything is in there, we don't need it as a condition. Okay. And, and some of them are you, the this, items of town. We can reference it in the decision. You want to you reference it? Review the list again. I do have copies of that. Okay. We're fine if you want to mention it as a condition as well. I mean, we're, we agree to it. Right. I mean, whatever makes Roy most comfortable. Well, I just think of the ones as a reference to our agreement. Yeah. Time. Yeah. <clears throat> because some of you really can't draw on a plan as well. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So we apply to the trees to the north. Right. I, th I think we need to condition this in the plan. I, I'm looking at all the different. There's a couple in verified in the field with legacy farms. I mean, that's unless there's a note on the plan that says that same thing. You know, it's kind of tough. And I'm sure the plan doesn't talk about dying trees, et cetera. Yeah, I think we're 100% we're fine with that. I, mean, I don't know if you want to get into the warranty that they have between two private parties. It's not really a town. I'm just wondering, some of these are issues that are between private entities and whether the town wants to be involved in enforcing these, is what I'm concerned about. I, All of them. I think it but wouldn't be bad to have as a condition. I wouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, we're, we're trying to do screening and, you know, I mean, if the trees die, you know, then you don't get there either. I mean. You know, some some of those items might be similar conditions that we would want on the downside of the trees too. I mean, you know, we're looking for healthy trees. Some of them are, but I mean, some of them may just be between two private parties, and not necessarily something the town wants to enforce. What do, what do people think about that concern, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I don't think we're frankly, from our point of view, looking to enforce anything in that agreement. I think we'd be the ones probably to enforce it, but I think the fact that it's tied to the overall agreement makes it easier for us to enforce it. Yeah. I guess if, if you're putting this in the special permit, the town enforces it. So the building inspector would go out to determine compliance with this. I'm just wondering if that's a good use of town resources. Do we want to do that? Right. That would be the question. Do we want to have the town inspector? So some of them may be appropriate, and they're probably on the plan, and some of them may not be. So what are you suggesting, Elaine? So I think he's incorporated many of these into the plan. So the location of the trees, the type of tree, and so forth. But Actually, the type of the trees has to be determined. The height of solar panels. The height of the trees has to be determined. And there's a number of open issues relative to the height of buildings and things like that. Is the building inspector going out to see if they're watered or not watered? So you're going to look through the list and figure out which ones are appropriate for town conditions. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> I mean, but I don't have a real problem with a lot of these type of. You know, I would think you'd want something similar for most of these on, on, on the trees that protect the town's interest. And so if that's the case, we're worried about trees, whether they're actually watered or whatever, we just want them alive. <laughs> that might be the condition that, that you substitute with that, which is a lot easier to, to tell. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm trying to knock through some more of these things here. Um, let's talk about the decommissioning surety. Lane, you had a recommendation for us, I think, on that. Yeah, given the Attorney General's caution and their letter approving the bylaw, I recommend that you not. I think that you will not be able to use the money. <laughs> It'll have to go to the general fund, right? And then get appropriated town meeting. There's no guarantee that. In the meantime, they do have um, provided information about the previous hearings about the decommissioning mm -hmm. that they have. Can, can we require a?
condition that something between Marathon Solar and the property owner have that type of decommissioning surety? Oh, oh we, have, we have a big requirement there. <laughs> we, we actually well, what I'm saying is, is that... <laughs> Roger that can tell you all about it. I, and, and I understand why Roger has that. <laughs> we have something similar, similar interest in that, but, you know... Roger and I are, are, are not young guys, and, and you know. Well, we're we're legally bound beyond all of our lives, believe me. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, that, can, that that can, is clear. Can you put together a condition that says that that agreement has to continue somewhere? I don't know how we would see that. For as long as the facility is there, that would require it. The the landowner and the solar person have to have a, a decommissioning. Yeah. Somehow we can write something maybe. That's great. That works. Okay. Wetland buffer zone impact, we're waiting for CONCOM on that one. Performance with the Water Resources Protection Overlay Requirements. That's the second permit that we have here. Um, no, this was um, a separate bylaw. That it was in one of Beta's letters, and since then it's been addressed. It's been addressed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, then stormwater management is the Beta that's review. Also been addressed. And that's all been addressed. Mm -hmm. Do any board members have any problems with the stormwater type permit? In the resolution of that, I think there was a wasn't there an email or letter that yeah, just Beta said tonight. tonight. They're yeah. all set. Mm -hmm. Everything is cool. That everything is cool. So yeah. as far as I'm concerned, can keep that. We'll consider that one closed. Nothing else has to be done. I don't think. Do we need to attach plans to that permit? I think so. The yes. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, so stormwater at this point is just right. Figuring out how to how to write the decision. There's no there's no items that we have left, or we have and we have the, this kind of a standard set of conditions that, are, that were in our packet tonight. Yeah. Did you guys have any questions, comments, concerned about the, the some of the conditions that were in that package? No, I think we're comfortable with everything there. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Yeah. No, I just don't know actually which package oh. you're referring to. The, the stormwater. Uh, is it like a drop? From beta. Can it from yeah. my memo? Do you guys look at her memo? Uh, I missed it. Okay. Or don't have have it's seen it. Okay. It's online. We'll it. It's it's attached to the agenda, yep. and, and that always always helps people to understand. Extra copy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Uh, I can't imagine. Anyway. Yeah. We'll look at it. Okay, we'll look at that yeah. from the other side. So, and I think we left on the pilot agreement. If I remember correctly, you were going to discuss that with the town after you got approval. The that town was wanted to, I, which I don't understand. Uh, it was largely they didn't want the perception of a conflict. <laughs> Uh, that was my understanding. I mean, we they said, look, get, go through and get your permits and then come back and talk to us and uh, we'll, we'll work on the pilot. And it, it, we don't have to get a pilot agreement. Uh, mm -hmm. We could just be taxed, you know, assessed and taxed. So there's no requirement that we get a pilot. Okay. Uh, I don't think that necessarily is something that we have to worry about. Uh, everyone? Yeah. Comfortable with that? We'll close that one out. Okay, I'm trying to think of how to how to figure out where we are without knowing what they're doing next door. 
<laughs> or is there a time that you're supposed to be back? I went home? back over at eight forty-five, and they had a few other hearings they were going through. So John said oh, he'd come back and get me, but I can go check and. Oh, so see the, where so they're they're, at. they're still not talking about you guys. No, no, they had not to hit our back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That okay, we know well then. Um, sure, Roy. Right. Thank you. you want yeah. Thanks. Uh, Other concerns by members of, of the the public or the planning board uh, members that we need to, to talk more about. I understand uh, this message just came back from Turkey. No, I was your brother. One of you kids came back from vacation, right? I was out in California. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's a long way from Turkey. <laughs> they still don't. They're still on. Oh, okay. They're, they're on other things. So well, you're, you were going to continue us anyway? I think, I think we're going to continue anyway. And where I view us at this point is you've got just a few items to make sure they're in the plan set so that we don't want to approve what the plan set is. Yeah. We'll take some more public comment at the end of next meeting. If so far there has not been a lot of, other than the Parks and Rec Commission, there hasn't been a, a huge public outcry per se uh, we appreciate that yeah. <laughs> uh, and we'll go through and just go through the uh, the standards which which is in Elaine's menu memo and, uh, and discussions of uh, Final set of conditions, etc. And the goal of hopefully having some decision from those guys, which will tell you how many panels go in, basically. Right. Yes. And we would uh, presumably, if they vote tonight, um, hopefully they approve us in some form. Uh, we would update the plan before yes. your next meeting. Yep. You'd have a, you know, basically a final plan. Uh, before you. <coughs> We're looking to have a member from Ever Sports here for the next continuing meeting. Mr. DeYoung, as a matter of fact, when I was out in California, I visited the DeYoung the, the Museum out there. Oh, you did? Yeah, it's a magnificent place. Yes. I'd love to tell you that they were related, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if we were, I would not be here. <laughs> you didn't fund that? Yeah. <laughs> It is a great museum. I was there last year. Yeah. Maybe discount. <laughs> um, we we want to express our appreciation to to the board as well. You've been, I mean, and continue to be very thoughtful in your commenting and uh, have contributed to make this a better project. I think so. Uh, we just really are eager to work with the town, not just now, but on an ongoing basis to make this happen and make it a good project and an asset to the town and. Uh, we fully intend to work with the schools as well and integrate that into the curriculum as, as much as possible with the website and tours and uh, that kind of thing as well. So we, we hope it becomes uh, something the town is proud of and enjoys. Not to pre-guess what you might vote at the next meeting, but we hope that you'll approve us then. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I okay, had a comment. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we are a green community which we earned you work in the state, and we just recently got another batch of grants to the town, three hundred thousand dollars or so. So, you have a good history of working with us, uh, and I appreciate that. Um, there's a long history of working with us, and Mr. McDowell has a, a good history of working with us as well. So it's a really good team. Great. Thank you. I, I do have one question. Sure. Yep. Yeah. And I may have missed this, Mr. Chairman. Is there a benefit to the town? There is. Um, there's. I guess there's a couple of benefits. One, the town will get tax money. So there's a financial benefit. I, mean, I guess that's the sort of nuts and bolts piece. And it's not insubstantial. We don't know exactly what that number is going to be, but it's it's real real money annually. Mm -hmm. um, the other benefit is it uh, preserves this site as de facto open space. You know, it, you know, while it's a solar farm, it'll be a solar farm, but it'll be uh, it'll have a lot of uh, wildlife attributes and 
be open. And then at the end of this project, we take the stuff down, and it's still planned. You know, so well, I, I'm, uh, I'm the I'm looking at the wetlands on that side. I don't think you could build much. There. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, there's if you, you never know. So, feet. Uh, so as far as we're concerned, it, it's it's another way to preserve open space in the town. In this case, on private land, um, and. Uh, well, we feel that it's good in that regard as well. And and furthermore, as far as the green energy produced, yes, you're enabling a project that produces a lot of green energy. Those green uh, uh, kilowatts or kilowatt hours are shoot, are coming into the grid there, and they get dispersed locally. So people will be, and, and, and the ISO New England ratchets down the brown power plants to let the green energy in. That's how it works. It, the green energy has preference into the grid. So by permitting this project, you are reducing the amount of pollution that's going into the air, the amount of uh, carbon and, and, uh, is offset, et cetera. So while you may not be getting the net metering credits in this case because we're just simply not allowed to under the rules at this point for a project of this type, um, you're getting tax money and you're getting the sort of, you're enabling and promoting uh, a good green project that does reduce uh, air pollution and uh, contributes to the sustainability of our electric supplies. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'd like to, on the matter of taxes, as a taxpayer, we're, we would be almost perfect. We don't use schools. We don't generate traffic. We don't uh, require any services to, to, uh, to deal with uh, the, the, the high net the, positive. What? <laughs> high net positive. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Can we continue this? Yes. Uh, who's going to be around on July 27th? I'm here. Should be. <coughs> okay, so at least the people that are here, probably. Okay. No, not you. Claire, we're going to have, we have to have six, right? We have to have six. I think so. Three, four. Do you remember? What, Matt? And Claire. And Claire and Matt both. Watch the video and just Claire and Matt. Okay. Well, why don't I propose the, the 27th at 730? 730 works, I think. Ken, excuse me, to that point, though, a, little, a meeting a little later in the, uh, the evening will accommodate our parking lot attention. Okay. How, how much? Let's give you for me. Would 8 o'clock work for you? That's better. 8 o'clock? Yeah. And and quite frankly, if we don't, oh, we have something for, we've got something that can fill up, for Ash Street can fill it up for that half an hour, or, and we can get out of the stuff. Done. So, so it uh, pr propose uh, entertain a motion to uh, continue the public hearing until July 27, 2015, at 8 p.m. So moved. Moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And uh, we'll see you back. We get over next door and hopefully get a decision from them. Yeah. Uh, We're still in the middle of uh, the street problem of this. Uh, Which? Uh, Franklin Road. Oh, okay. That's good. Thank, thank you again for uh, your time. Sure. Thank you. Jeff. Appreciate it. Uh, any further discussion? Any agenda items that anyone cares about? Has there been any feedback to the letters? None. Well, no. the, the, other than the selectmen that haven't put us on their agenda for tomorrow night, and then they're not meeting for another bunch of weeks. But, uh, we're going to get busier very shortly. I expect the library site plan review to come in sooner than later. There was some discussion that they wanted a ground break in, in, in uh, September as part of the That's right. really? That's part, 300, yeah. part of the 300 thing. Yeah. If they don't submit plans, <laughs> that ain't, th ain't going to happen. <laughs> and I don't know. Have you heard anything more about the library plans? No. Well, you know, it is what... Well, they had inquired as to what the dates are that you meet when the well, you know, they've got a lot of, lot of stuff to provide with that. Okay. Uh, seeing nothing else, uh, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded.
further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you all for a good meeting. Very efficient.